Welcome to segment number four of Seniorities with the Situate Council on Aging. My name is Linda Hayes. I'm director at the Senior Center. Uh, we are here today to talk about transportation, a critical senior center service. Uh, with me today also is Jean Sullivan, our transportation coordinator, okay. and J.D. Miller, our COA board chairperson. So I have recently stopped driving myself or my parent has recently stopped driving and needs some options, or I've heard that you offer rides to medical appointments for seniors or disabled, is that true? Um, or I've just moved to Situate and I don't drive, what do I do? What are my options? These are many of the calls that we get at the Senior Center daily. Um, all calls, of course, mostly go to Jean and she handles them uh, deftly as our transportation coordinator new with us since August. So she's hit the ground running since then in a busy position and has done a great job learning the nuances of the job and the seniors and a lot of the requirements and the regulations uh, that she needs to deal with for drivers and vans in the town. So it's a this service. The, this is the first day she's had a break since August. <laughs> <laughs> right now. It's a service we're really proud of. It is a very busy um, area, first thing in the morning until, you know, end of the day. So, um, I certainly want to let Jean elaborate on all of that herself um, and happy to have her here today to do that for all of you. So Jean, Thank could you, you, <laughs> tell, you, could you, uh, you know, tell us a little bit like the day in the life, a day in the life yeah, sure, of sure. the transportation yes. coordinator. <laughs> so we provide local rides for seniors going to doctor appointments, library, um, haircuts, anything that's within situate, we can help with that. And we provide medical out of town rides also but that's through another company called South Shore Community Action. So what somebody would do, a senior would call up, and I would ask them if they are reg registered with us, and if they aren't, I would send out a brochure for them to fill out the paperwork, and we would put them into our My Senior Center, is the name of the system. And once we have that all in place, they could call up five days before a ride for out-of-town medical, and two days before local rides. Even the same day could work, but typically at least two days ahead of time would be great. And we take the information, um, break down the time, their return time, what doctor appointment or where they're going, and um, we schedule it into my senior center. And I basically print out a report and give it to the driver um, a couple of days ahead of time so that they know what they're doing for the day. And, um, so, Jean, let me, let me hop in and ask some, mm -hmm. or back you up a little bit. Medical. Mm -hmm. Boston? Yes. South yep. Shore. Yep. They go pretty far, actually, as long as they have a five-day window. Okay. Yep. So, they, so they go medical's got to be a five-day in, in advance, yes. which obviously needs to be then coordinated with the doctor or the hospital. But once you've got that information, you can schedule it. Right. And with that, we have a small window, that just so people realize that, because I often get calls for 8.30 in the morning, and because we use Social Community Action, we can't provide 8.30 right. in the morning. Sure. So they leave Plymouth at about 9, so they get to situate about 9.30. So we typically ask for 10.30 on for Boston. Okay. And then Weymouth or any surrounding towns, Norwell, 10 o'clock would be okay. But so 10.30 to 5? So that's Four, another, I was going to say three. the rest. <laughs> okay. And then they have to typically be finished by 1.15, okay. 1.30, because they do daycare mm -hmm. pickups. <clears throat> Um, all wow. around Plymouth for seniors and uh, actually probably more than Plymouth but um, then they if they were in Boston their appointment ended at 2 o'clock they might have to wait till 5 o'clock for a return ride okay. so it is a tight window but it seems to be working because now people seem to know what our mm -hmm. you know hours well, are so. so would you suggest someone calls you to sort of figure out what window they need to talk to their doctors about mm -hmm. and then call the doctor that would be great Yes. As opposed yes. to having a doctor's appointment and saying, yes, oh, i got to be here at 9.15. Well, yes. we can't get you there at 9.15. Yes. Right? We do have regular riders, so they know. But when somebody's new, that happens a yeah, lot. Okay. Yeah, yep. okay. So call ahead would be great. Okay. Just as a new client, just to get to know what <laughs> yeah. some yeah. of the provisions mm -hmm. are or need to be. And it is in our brochure. Um, it states the hours. So hopefully they're getting a newsletter in our mm -hmm. transportation brochure that we mail to them that they fill out before they're in our system. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So m medical is five days in advance. Mm -hmm. All vans? All vans? I don't know. All, are the vans the, the transportation vehicle? Oh, okay. Not necessarily. Okay. But if they're in a wheelchair, we write that down on our paperwork. Okay. 
to tell South Shore Community Action because they would need a yeah, wheelchair van. Yeah, wheelchair accessible um, van to be able to yes, yep, yep, do the lift. Yep, so we do fill out information to send them. Mm -hmm. So basically I fill out a sheet that has all that information, fax it down to South Shore Community Action. A day or two, usually a day later, I get a confirmation back, and this is the time we can pick them up, this is the time we will return them, and I would call the senior that called or whoever and okay. let them know the window. Okay. So, so medical's five days, mm -hmm. and you mentioned two days for just sort of normal, in town, in routine town, yeah. things. Okay. Yep, yep. And then we also have on Tuesdays we go to Shaw's regularly. So Tuesday mornings is tough if you have a doctor's appointment right when we're taking our van to Shaw's because we try to run one van a day, so we only have to pay one driver a okay. day. That's ver fine. Versus two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it gets too busy, we'll obviously put that two vans change. on the yep. road. But, yep. but um, Shaw's on. Tuesday mornings, and then we do the harbor on Thursday mornings and Congregational Church on Thursday afternoons. And then every other second and fourth Wednesday, we go to harbor, um, Hanover Mall and Trader Joe's. So you've got some specifically earmarked trips every week. Mm -hmm. We do. That either mm -hmm. people can utilize or but the vans are going to be tied up for. Well, it's a portion of the day that yeah, is yeah, allocated yeah, to yeah, that yeah. particular mm -hmm. trip, but then sure. around that trip you is also the, the yeah. other time. sort yep. of day to day. Okay. So individual. the drive, the driver on a Shaw's or a Shaw's day would start at eight o'clock because there's usually at least seven people, and then they get to Shaw's by nine and get picked up by nine forty-five, and then by the time they're dropped off again, it's you know, ten thirty, quarter of eleven, and then after that, we fill the window with other. People get their shopping done from in 45 minutes? They or? do. They do. It's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Usually I would think it might take a little longer but for some But they're usually people. people that live alone and they just need a few things in one bag. Okay. Limit their yeah. bags. Yep. Okay. I do the right. same. Right. I right. do the same. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. So our own vans, mm -hmm. we do have, um, of course, that provide the local service. I'm going to talk about those a little bit. The local service? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that was pretty much the... You call a couple of days ahead of time, and you let us know where you want to go. We book it. Um, obviously, we try to make sure mm -hmm. that you fit in the schedule. And if you don't, I would call you back and explain it. Um, but almost always it works. Like if you are, you know, go calling on a day that the van goes to Shaw's, well, they drop off at Shaw's, but then they have time, mm -hmm. yep. and they can run you to an appointment, you know, locally, and, and it works. Mm -hmm. It's been great. It's been it's a great service. And we have two vans that we have used now for some years. One is the 10-person van and one is the 12-person van, mm -hmm. which I guess we choose between depending on it's not a big difference in the size, but they prefer one over the other depending yeah. on what they have for ridership. Mm -hmm. And then we have had a third van for the last year, um, which actually had, a four had 14 seats. Uh, we are considering turning that in now instead for a 12-person, just the 14 seats made it that much more difficult to um, have a driver for at all times. Yeah, I remember and, you mentioned that. Um, it, it's a different driving license, right, yeah. for a 14? It is, is it? yeah. There's a lot of training. There was a little bit more training and yeah. requirements on yeah. the driver's side. It wasn't really the license itself. And but it's um, a large okay. van to yeah. drive. Yeah. It involved a little bit more. Um, so anyway, we're in the process of maybe transitioning into a slightly, you know, maybe another 12 person, which would be ideal, because I think we use that the most. Yeah, we do. Yep. We have a smaller van, a 10 passenger that's really tight, so mm. the drivers and the passengers don't like mm -hmm. that one, so the, the one van is getting a lot of use. Yeah. Okay. So, so hopefully we'll get a new one from mm -hmm. Gatra mm -hmm. in the next that few pending. months. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, we expect that. So I was going to say with Gatra, with that, um, they do require... For a new driver, they, we need defensive. They have to have defensive driving, accessible lift, and um, passenger. Re, re, sorry, can't see this. Securement and disability awareness class, along with drug and alcohol awareness, and then they take CPR and first aid. So that's all required by Getra. Getra drivers. Getra, our, our drivers that drive Getra okay. vans. Yep. So, so they all have that at the moment. We have three drivers that have been with us mm -hmm. for a long time, mm -hmm. two over ten years and one over seven years. Mm -hmm. So. So it's, it's which has been very valuable. For, we mm -hmm. have finally needed an, an additional driver, which we have definitely the, the work for. But they alternate their days, and then some are doing special trips, which, which we are trying to do more of, the one-day mm -hmm. field trips to various places. Um, and just to have somebody as a backup, whether it's for some of the extra community uh, rides that we, we try to provide um, monthly or, or weekly, the lunches. Mm -hmm. the other They're down in Rhode Island as we speak. At one of the mansions oh. down there, so wow. yeah, it was a nice turnout sort of, of 11, 11 people. Yeah. Yep. 
No, they really appreciate that, and uh, I think it's it's gone very well. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work to plan it between the vans, the van having the van available, getting a second driver who will drive the distance wherever it is that we might be going, especially when it's Boston, which is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then maintaining the list uh, so that we always know who is going and that we have sufficient you know, uh, sign-ups for the trip. But um, no, they really like that. So is a local trip only situate, or does it spill into um, neighboring towns? It, it, Hingham, it, 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 could, it could spill into a neighboring town okay. if it works, okay. schedule-wise. Okay. Somebody today, I got a call from Harbor Medical, somebody needed an x-ray in Cohasset, and we, you know, basically, can you do it? Mm -hmm. And I kept the doctor on the line and looked, and we could do it. And okay. So we, we yeah, squeezed them right. in. It's, yeah, you know, two miles yeah. down the road kind mm -hmm. of thing. Right, mm -hmm. yep. So usually, yes. Okay. Sometimes no. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes no. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I mean, I, I, c clearly the point I'm hearing is the more lead time that people can give you, yes. the better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if there's a question as to what they need, they should call you. Mm -hmm. Right. No, absolutely. Yes, yep. we can do this. No, we can't. Yep. But at no. least they then they know to mm -hmm. either they can do this uh, mm -hmm. on, a, on a certain scheduled day or they, they need to find other resources to help them get what they need to do. Yep, that's right. And if we can't do it, we often ask, do you want a volunteer to come, you know, pick you up if we can find one. Mm. So we do have a small volunteer list. I wish there were a couple more. Some go to Florida for the winter. Mm -hmm. Actually, many of them do. Mm -hmm. and, ah, they'll um, so, be coming back now. So, so I'm now. calling the same three people over and over. <laughs> so, But it's um, been very helpful having okay. the volunteers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. But yes, the... the Sooner the better to call me, yes. Okay. Even if it's a couple months away, I have a future folder I keep, and I look at those regularly, and, yep, we book it, and mm -hmm. it works. Okay. Do you want to talk a little about the fees? Or? Oh, okay, sure. Sure. So the local fees are $2.50 round trip or $1.25 each way, but we also, Gatra just started with a pass that you can buy, and it ends up being a dollar each, each way, mm -hmm. so you get 10 rides for ten dollars mm -hmm. and you just get on the bus and the driver will cross off your ride and okay. it's, it's a little bit easier because you don't have to have 50 cents mm -hmm. in your pocket two dollars and fifty cents right. the change has been a little bit difficult it's a card it's a, it's a card yep and then if you have a lot of rides there's some people that have an awful lot of rides out of town are typically five dollars each way um and it's really like a donation but also a fee yeah. but you know it's just helping kind of with the transportation fund which Gatra, you can talk about Gatra afterwards, pays for. Um, but it's five each way for out of town to Boston, which I think is pretty good, and then 250 round trip locally. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the out of town medical trips obviously cost us a lot yeah. more. Mm. So, um, in lieu Betting of providing it completely free of charge, there is you know a little bit of compensation to supplement the budget. Um, mm. But if you're going into a Boston hospital, it's got to be, a, even in great traffic, it's got to be 45 minutes. Yeah. And it's more likely to be in excess of oh, an hour. Sure. Oh, sure. So mm -hmm. that's tying up a driver and a van for... Well, of course, keep in mind, we are paying uh, uh, Social Community Action Council for that ride, mm -hmm. and it does add up. I mean, what are mm -hmm. one of the more expensive rides is somewhere around well, fifty dollars five dollars one, one way, way. Yep. so we get a, yep. usually a three thousand dollar bill a month mm. for those out of town rides mm -hmm. yeah okay so they do add up so the little donation helps with right. that yeah. a bit so. right absolutely mm -hmm. uh, well gatra and i know that often comes up as a question what is gatra <laughs> and what do they do for us gatra is an acronym it does stand for I know it by heart. Mm -hmm. Greater, Greater Attleboro Taunton Regional Transit Authority, and basically, it is it is our they are our partner in lieu of having the MBTA here in town to provide certain services, as some you know more metropolitan cities and towns around Boston do have. Um, they don't come here. Gatra is a state agency. They partner with twenty eight communities, all told, at this point um, in in the Greater Boston area. And West, a little bit, obviously, as the name implies, Attleboro and Taunton. But they provide our funding. Um, they provide our funding through the state, really. Um, and we had negotiated back in 2012 um, a budget amount with them, which which we basically maintained for the last four or five years. 
Um, it, it could change. We haven't exhausted it as yet annually any of those years, so it's, it's been uh, sufficient for us to provide our services so far. But they uh, help to manage the transportation services as, you know, left to our own devices. Maybe it wouldn't be quite as easy to, to, um, to manage the volume that we do manage at this point. So they had provided us with the third van recently, which is something they also ensure and maintain and try to help us manage in terms of the regulations that we need to, to um, follow from the state and the federal government for the money. Um, they or, or they sort of guarantee their service. It's dial-a-ride, which you see on the van uh, that they provide to us, Gatra's dial-a-ride service, which is basically us, but it's their guarantee of providing safe, comfortable, um, accessible to all disabled and seniors over the age of 60 um, transportation um, as administered through the Council on Aging. So that is our charge, so our responsibility to do that. Come yes. to Gene. Yes. So it is our, it's one and the same, it is our service, yeah. but, but GATRA as a state agency also sort of guarantees that service to the disabled, to the seniors over 60. Mm -hmm. So if we couldn't provide the ride, they could call GATRA mm -hmm. directly, it's on the brochure, and they mm -hmm. might deviate their route and pick them up and bring them. And that they, brings up the other service go. that's come into town, which is separate and distinct from the Council on Aging Transportation Service, but the SLOOP is an independent uh, public transportation line service provided directly by GATRA, having worked that out with the town of Situate and the town administrator. Uh, we certainly um, talk about what they do together because it really sometimes um, all becomes a little bit more melded. But um, the deviated route that was recently um, factored in is to make sure we can provide the disabled in town when they need that ride. If they cannot get to the stops where the sloop is mm -hmm. picking up people, mm -hmm. then if they're within the certain um, yeah, what is quarter, it, a mile? quarter of a mile, corridor, quarter three quarters of a mile, of a mile corridor, corridor, then they can make a call to Gatra and, and, and come the driver and will mm -hmm. deviate from the route um, and get them where they need to go. Yeah. So that was helpful and um, certainly they often still call us. So the service that we provide is always available to the same population. Um, the sloop, of course, is open to everyone, you know, young and old, um, and many of our seniors do take advantage of it only because it is less, it does follow a schedule, but doesn't need to be in advance as we request. Uh, am I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the town, the, the, the loop for the sloop mm -hmm. yeah. is about an hour? It is now. Now that it goes Just to a, situation, so it is. It was a half finish, an hour. start to finish, one whole cycle, mm -hmm. one whole loop is about an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep, little and long. they run, what, from 7 in the morning? Yeah, oh, we, have, we, have, we have a schedule. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, so I'm not sure, it, but I know it's pretty early to pretty late. So they do have a... It's relatively early in the morning. See. It could be see 7 and see. it could be till 7 it's at 7 night. 7.32. I don't know if I can see an end time here. 8.23. Okay. So 7.30 to 8.30. Yep. Mm -hmm. 7.30 a.m. to about 8.30 mm -hmm. yeah. p.m. Monday through Friday, you've got a little less on Saturday. Saturday is 9 to about 5. Yeah, yeah you've got 11 yeah. to 12 straight mm -hmm. hours there of coverage. Mm -hmm. 13 hours of coverage. Yeah, it's too bad people don't, more people don't use it. Right. Because it's a great, right. it's a great. Right, you know yeah. where it's going to be. It's going to be on a schedule. It's coming every hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, we recently did, as Jean had mentioned, about the fees. So just to stay in keeping with what Gatra tries to have all the communities that it serves do. We raised our fee structure from a dollar a ride to a dollar twenty-five, but then really go back to the dollar a ride if they get the 10 right mm -hmm. pass. So, you know, trying to stay within our own, you know, what's our philosophy in terms of not overcharging our riders and making it as accessible mm -hmm. as possible that they can get this kind of service. And I hear um, a lot of seniors say, well, it's only 50 cents for the sloop. But yeah, the sloop is not so much door to door right. like we right. are. So, right. and yes. we are, you know, they call it curb to curb or mm -hmm. destination to destination. So, in fact, our driver, our local drivers, have to follow certain protocols. You know, they really aren't supposed to leave the van, which is why oftentimes when some of our mm. potential clients aren't as independent as you know would really would be required to use the service, 
they may need an escort or a yeah, caregiver they're, to they're come really, with them to get them to the van or, or out of the van you know, and into the home Someone in a walker safely. is waiting at a, at a doorway entrance is really not supposed to, <clears throat> the driver's got to right. let them come to right. the, the van. Not mm -hmm. So this is oftentimes what we need to let clients yeah. know and, and just try to help them kind of transition into what needs to come next. Yep. Uh, we try to make it as, um, you know, as easy as possible to use our service and, and make the transition from driving to not driving themselves, you know, as, as easy as possible. Yeah. But um, and and oftentimes we have stories yeah, about camaraderie absolutely. on the vans is great. They miss each other and they go. Up, they actually went yeah. on a trip together, though it's six of them Recently, up to yeah. Maine, and it was, nice. it was nice. They became buddies, so it's a, it's all a positive thing for it sure. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And, and hopefully that's uh, that everybody's been great. Really nice good. people. Uh, so, Jean, what's your day like? I come in in the morning and I see the light blinking on my phone. And <laughs> there and are I already, say, messages, okay, there are already messages, messages on your phone. Yes, okay. yes, yep. So I basically find out what's going on, who's not going, who wants to go, and try to schedule whoever it is to call or cancel. And I have a two-way radio, so if the driver is on the road, I'll pick up the radio and call them. And tell them oh, okay. If, if there's any changes, I let them know. Um, and that would more likely be a cancellation, right? Because you, you yeah. wouldn't be able to take someone. Normally, no, but sometimes like we do. Okay. Yeah, we okay. like two days' notice, but if it works and we can yeah. do it, yeah. we, we accommodate. Okay. So that's it's mm -hmm. been okay actually mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. I mean, uh, last year in 2016, we provided a total 6,870 rides through the year, which is the combination of local rides and out-of-town medical mm -hmm. um, for, I think that boils down to about 250 clients that we serve on a regular, well, completely yeah. um, throughout that year. I didn't bring the numbers for Yeah, we year. do like, I'm saying, I'm getting, in the fall, 450 a month local, 125 mm -hmm. out-of-town, mm -hmm. and then as the winter gets colder, mm -hmm. the numbers drop down a little, mm -hmm. and sure. the spring comes, and the numbers mm -hmm. are back up again, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's busy. Right, so, but so say that again, How, local is 100 and... So 450 a month, so 100, say 100 a week. 100 a week, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's pretty much average. And medical is? About 25 a week. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because there's Still actually five a day. Yeah, That's they do. Three people in Situa do go for dialysis, so they're on the books for three days. Oh, and wow. Monday, okay. Wednesday, yeah, sure. Friday, right. and two, mm -hmm. you know, back and forth. So that's, you know, six yeah. rides there. So it, it does add up quickly. Mm -hmm. but, and then with the regular um, Shaw's and, you know, the harbor and all that. So the, the numbers do yeah. get, get up there quickly. Okay. So, I think it's important to know that, you know, just to call as soon as you do know you have a need for a ride. But always too we do try to accommodate and know it's difficult to do the planning ahead of time uh, at the same time there is a limit to how many people we can carry on the van and get to each day so it does help the day or two advance uh, notices really yeah helpful. that's great and there's some people that go to activities regularly mm -hmm. they, you know this council on aging offers a lot of activities that unfortunately are not in-house mm -hmm. because we don't have a center that's big mm -hmm. enough so they are going to st luke's or somewhere else in town and um we can I can put them in for a whole month because I know they're in the class. And then I say, call yeah. me if you're not going. Okay. <clears throat> and it makes it really easy for Which scheduling. Which actually has increased our numbers yeah. for activities at the center and throughout uh, the other sites that we use, which has been mm -hmm. great. So actually that yeah. is a little bit newer mm -hmm. that we've been doing that many of those. So you're able to pick up people to take them to a class. Yeah, an exercise mm -hmm. class oh, yeah. or to come to one of our, okay. one mm -hmm. of our activities okay. or programs. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying... So does your day just continue to, to, to spin forward some days until are quiet, five, five some o'clock? Some days are crazy, yes. After you, after you walk in and see all the, all the, yeah. all the beeping yeah. red lights yeah, on I mean, your phone? It's, it's consistently busy, I have to say, because if you're you know, doing the schedule for the next week, then the next year. Right. So I'm always doing it a few days ahead, get everybody in there, and then I get the calls, I add new people, then I print out new and we Schedule throw in the trips, which are, yeah. you know, technically activities, so they could be calling about that activity, but essentially they still, it's still transportation yeah. <laughs> in the end. But, yeah, it's, a lot of calls a busy all day. Is there mm -hmm. anything that, that, that's available for people on weekends? Through us, not so much. Not through us. Yeah. Uh, there have been events that I mean, that obviously, people have, Sloop is still running. Mm, yeah. yeah. But. There are events that they have. Some have called to ask us whether we can provide help with. There was a luncheon in the fall at St. Mary's. There is the St. Luke's monthly dinner, 
which we do always bring people right. that's, to. Oh, that's that's true. Sun, so there are times, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the policeman's luncheon, you know, yeah. things that do come up on the weekends if we know ahead of time right. and the yeah. driver is available, then yes. But on a regular yeah. basis, not, not Yeah, because. and sometimes we have trips on the weekend also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I was yeah. Yeah. asking to... But regularly, not yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not right. for appointments. Probably in the future. You never know. I mean, staying mm. open at night or we've, mm. we've considered... A supper club, monthly supper club, something that gets people out at night, or you know, maybe we would do something on a weekend someday. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, we don't have the staff. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Are numbers picking up, or are they steady? It's funny because I started in August, so I did a little comparison because yep. I thought it was really crazy busy in the fall, and I looked from a year prior, mm -hmm. and it was almost exact. Mm -hmm. So, I have to do that again. I, I did that in the fall and it was the same as the year before, so I don't know about right now. Okay. I know with the warm weather it's increasing, mm -hmm. but compared to last year, I'm not really sure. Okay. Something I should look at. But Linda, you quoted, what, 6,000 some odd rides 6, last year. 6,870 in the year's time. Yes. And that was consistent probably the previous year. Okay. Pretty close. Maybe a little bit more, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do our best. That's a lot. That's a lot of. We hate to we hate to say no. That's yeah. yeah. Well, that's a lot of rides. <laughs> um. But yeah. So you know, note in the newsletter, of course, which we're happy to say, proud to say, is is mailed today, I believe, for our May first. You know, the, the, our new newsletter for May and June, which does have a, a page, almost a whole page, I think, on the transportation options, um, phone number, anything that you might need. Uh, in addition, of course, we have got some great events coming up, we think, for May and June as well. But um, we're going to celebrate Mother's Day on May 12th, which is a Friday morning. Celebrate our mothers. Um, oh, with just something nice in the morning, um, as well as a movie, Hidden Figures, which shows some strong women and what they had accomplished for us many years ago. Uh, also, May 17th, I want to mention a, a wonderful event, a cafe talk with a baseball historian author named Herb Crehan, and he is coming, having just published a book called uh, The Impossible Dream, 1967 Red Sox and the Birth of Red Sox Nation. So it uh, looks like a great book um, with the foreword written by a local Red Sox celebrity, in fact. So... Um, he will be here to talk about his book, to talk about the topic of his book, to do a slideshow presentation and discussion, and we'll have a reception afterwards with him. That's on Wednesday, May 17th. I'm really excited to have him come. That's great. Um, and anything else, just make sure you read the newsletter, like us on Facebook, because that helps us get the word out. We're trying to do that. Uh, keep our um, Town of Situate Council on Aging website page up to date with our calendar as well, or just call the Senior Center and uh, see what we have in store. And get your email registered. And get your email registered, which we would like to right. have. That would help a yes, lot. Yes, that would right. be great. Yep. We do continue to do our voice broadcast calls because primarily we have people's phone numbers, um, but the emails would be very helpful, yes. Mm -hmm. So anybody who needs help transportation-wise, mm -hmm. call the Senior Here's Center Jean. and ask for Jean. <laughs> I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> she will be there. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Terrific job. I'm sure you, your head must spin sometimes. Some days are good, quiet. Day. Some days are busy. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. But it's been fun. Perfect. Good. Just Glad to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it's, the best part is just giving seniors independence. That's what I keep hearing. They don't want to rely on their kids, and they just want to be able to do what they want to do and go to their appointments without you know, calling family. So that's the best part. Absolutely. I think that's very mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Priority. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Linda Hayes, Director of the Council on Aging. Jean Sullivan, Transportation Coordinator, Council on Aging. J.D. Miller, Chairman of the Board, Council on Aging. Thank you. Great. Thank you.